I was puzzling this in my head as you were showing the, one of the early studies talking about mold contamination in meat. And I'm thinking, why would meat have mold contamination? And then of course, the light bulb goes on as you continue talking and you're talking about the peanut meal that's contaminated with aflatoxin, contaminating turkey meat. And I'm thinking, oh, of course, I don't eat any meat that's not grass fed and grass finished, but the majority of people on the planet are still eating mostly grain finished beef. That is where the mold contamination is coming from in meat or beef or turkey or chicken or pork. So let's bring it back full circle, guys. Like you should be eating animals that are eating a species appropriate diet. The whole point of all of the work that I do is to help us understand and to continue thinking and asking questions about what a species appropriate diet for humans is. Uh, I happen to believe it's an animal-based diet of organs, meat, fruit, honey, uh, more recently raw dairy. But uh, these things are going to have mold toxins in them. The meat is going to have mold toxins in it if it is fed grains. So yet another reason not to eat grain fed meat. And then as you were going through that early study as well, I was thinking, why is milk contaminated with mold toxins? Of course, most milk is from cows that are fed grains. So if you are eating cheese, I'm a huge fan of raw dairy. If you are eating milk, I'm a huge fan of raw dairy, but that probably doesn't go far enough. You want to be eating these foods from animals that are fed grass, that are fed good foods, that are not fed moldy grains. So you can go very far down this rabbit hole if we want to and take it in stride, guys. Don't get overwhelmed. But in Costa Rica, I've been very fortunate to get access to a, a raw goat milk. And I know the guy that makes the goat milk, he's not feeding the goats moldy grains, but you need to know your farmers. If you're getting raw milk, great. Presumably if somebody's making raw milk, they're gonna be feeding the cows grass. But if you're getting raw milk from a cow that's fed grains, mm, that's still a problem. It's still gonna be a much smaller exposure to mycotoxins than a cereal grain. I think based on the studies that you were showing, Evan, but I want people to be aware of this, that if you are eating grain-fed meat, here's another reason to avoid grain-fed meat. And if you're eating grain-fed dairy or any of these animal products, butter, whatever, even tallow from a grain-fed animal is going to be accumulating uh, mold toxins. People will often say they're the same. There's nothing, no big deal with grass fed. Why should I pay extra? You should pay extra to protect you and your family from freaking mold toxins. No joke. I mean, here's the thing though. Like we're having all this like scientific talk and look at this study that says this and look at this study that says that, but it's like, duh, we screwed everything up with agriculture. Like if we were just living like modern hunter gatherers, we wouldn't even need to have this discussion. And I know we can't fully go back to that way, but I just want people to think about what are the strategies in my day-to-day -day life, like getting more fresh air. I mean, people that are working from home now, if you look at, and I hate to say the word study again, but if you look at studies on people and how much time they spend inside, it's like 96% of the day is spent inside. So what is one simple modern hunter gather away to reduce your mycotoxin exposure if you're in a moldy office get outside and maybe you have the ability maybe the weather's decent enough to where you can work outside maybe you can do your your phone call outside i remember when we were in our house we were in the middle of remediation and i had a one hour new client call and i thought you know what i'm just going to go out in the woods and there was a snowstorm that just happened it was one of the most memorable consults I've ever had in my life. I had my headset in and I was literally just walking, crunching through the snow in the forest while on the call. And I thought, my God, why didn't I do this more often? Now, I was a bit distracted by the birds and stuff, but I was like, wow, this is like, this is so easy. This is a simple step that other people could be doing. Have that business call under a tree outside. Like if you absolutely have to be in this paper box, fine. But what about if you could crack your window open and just dilute some of this exposure. Like you mentioned with the dairy, I like some raw dairy too, but I'm not going to eat it unless it's a grass fed dairy. And I want to talk about one thing too. And I was thinking about this. Why are so many people being drawn to what you're doing? Why are so many people now finding that this animal based lifestyle is this magic miracle solution? And why are so many people now at such an extreme level of misery with their symptoms that the, the level of desperation, they're willing to go all in. And I think it's just the conglomeration of all of this. I think it's 30 to 40 years of people eating moldy grains. I think it's people that have their hormones disrupted from uh, drinking out of plastic their whole life and living in this paper box and being in the city and breathing in air pollution 
I mean, look at cortisol samples of people that live in the city versus cortisol samples of people that live in the rural area where they have more trees and greenery to look at. The cortisol samples in the, in the countryside are always lower. So these people now look at the population. The vast majority, over two-thirds of the world's population now lives in urban areas. We are leaving and losing what humankind is built to be exposed to. When I go into the city, we have some trees, but it's not the same experience. You have a lack of birds. They've done, they've done uh, GPS tracking on birds, and all the birds are moving out of the cities because they're losing their ability to express their full birdness. And this human zoo that we've created, that is the problem. And so not only from the air pollution aspect, but the lack of the greenery, the exposure to more buildings, the lack of this outdoor fresh air. So uh, I know I could go so many directions, but I'm just thinking out loud. I love it, man. I love it. Uh, birds losing their birdness, humans losing our humanness. Um, there was one other point I wanted to make before we get any further in the podcast. You were talking about the soy the sheer volume, the sheer area, excuse me, of land in Brazil that is occupied by soy. Um, so this is something I learned. I live in Central America now. I live in Costa Rica. I, I say that proudly. I live in a house that's mostly open air. We've talked about this. It's mostly concrete. I have a great lifestyle there, which is pretty darn low mold. I get grass-fed meat. And I posted about the bounty of an animal-based diet on social media. Um, I had I had a team down there with me recently doing some filming. We put this huge spread on the table, the concrete sort of center of my kitchen. And it was all these fruit and all these organs. And someone commented and said, you are eating food grown on a farm. And that farm is the cause of rainforest deforestation. Uh, you know, and I thought, okay, this is a super important point to address <laughs> because it is part of a plant-based rhetoric, which gets repeated too many times. And it is patently false. So in Amazonia, in Central America, in Brazil, in South America, if you clear land, if you clear the rainforest, you have rights to that land. You can essentially squat, you can essentially own land by clearing the rainforest. This is what people in Amazonia, Central America, South America know. So what is a what is a farmer going to think? Like, well, if I clear this plot of rainforest, if I can find some way to clear it, this is now my land. So what do they do? They cut down the rainforest and they bring in cattle because cattle do a good job of kind of clearing out the underbrush. But they're not, they're not clearing the rainforest to grow cattle. They're clearing the rainforest to grow soy. So this is the problem. And this gets repeated so often, Evan, that yes, except they're saying soy and cattle team up to drive deforestation in South America, but they're using the cattle, but the ultimate goal is to grow soy. They don't want to grow cattle on this land. They want to grow soy. So the cows are not deforesting the rainforest. Soy is deforesting the rainforest because the people are trying to get this land. So it's these policies. It's governmental policy in Amazonia that is saying, hey, if you clear this rainforest, you can have it. Well, people are all too happy to clear that rainforest. So cows are not driving rainforest deforestation in any way, shape, or form. And that piece of information is super important for anyone listening to this podcast to be equipped with, because this will come up in common conversation and you will now be much more informed than anyone else you are talking to. And that is very valuable um, because we need to educate the public and all people in all walks of life that, hey, cows are not the problem. It's usually grains. 